When it comes to yellow jackets, the theme of Greek tragedy may seem a bit out of left field, considering everything else going on in this survival story. However, season two of the series made it very clear that there are most certainly some strong overtones to the classical mythology, particularly with the presentation of the Bacchanal scene in episode two, titled Edible Complex. In my video titled You Are What You Eat, linked below, we explored some of the myths and their common theme, dismemberment and human cannibalism. Upon further research, I have discovered some much deeper threads of Greek mythology aligned with these subjects, along with much more connecting to the Yellow Jacket storyline. The Bacchanal scene and Shauna's Orphic dream point us toward the Orphic hymns or the Dionysian mysteries. And upon exploring these ancient texts and cross-comparing them with the theme of another Greek tale running throughout the show, the myth of Demeter and Persephone, it seems very clear that Yellow Jackets is presenting us with a reenactment of the Eleusinian Mysteries, which was the largest religious initiation ritual in ancient Greece, centered around the abduction of Persephone by Hades and the cult of Demeter in Eleusis. This video will be the first part in a series about this mystery religion and how it relates to Yellow Jackets. We will be looking at source material for the Orphic hymns, as well as connections between the Dionysian and the Eleusinian mysteries. As we discussed in my previous video, based on the research of Carol Kerini, Dionysus is the male counterpart to Persephone, as a sacrificial victim and one who is doomed to die, and this idea is at the core story of Yellow Jackets, as explored in Season 1. In the first part of this series, we will go over the basics of the Demeter and Persephone myth, as well as some of the Yellow Jackets characters and who I believe their Greek counterparts are as it pertains to this myth. So grab a cup of Misty's Punch, which is very likely Kaikion, and let's jump into this. But I made punch. First and foremost, if you are not familiar with the myth of Demeter and Persephone, the short version is the grain goddess Demeter, is the mother of the goddess of spring, Persephone, who was abducted by Hades, the god of the underworld, and taken to the realm of the dead to become his queen. Demeter searches the earth for many months, neglecting her duties as the harvest goddess, and so humanity suffers from famine and the gods do not receive their due offerings. Zeus, unhappy about not receiving his sacrifices, convinces his brother Hades to return Persephone to her mother. He agrees, but not before feeding her six honeyed pomegranate seeds, which binds her to the underworld for a part of each year during the winter months. Demeter spends those winter months in search of her daughter, eventually arriving in Eleusis, where a temple is built in her honor. From there, she teaches her higher mysteries to initiates, which are centered around the reincarnation cycle of life, death, and rebirth. The myth is also a reenactment of the seasonal cycle of the year. We are going to learn about the rituals and mysteries of this religious rite in this video series, but let's start by acquainting ourselves with the characters in this Greek tragedy. Demeter is one of the great divinities. She is a goddess of the harvest. She is an earth mother goddess, and her symbols include a single stalk of grain or corn. She wears a crown in her queenly aspect, but in her furious, inconsolable aspect called Demeter Arrhenes, she covers her beautiful hair. Demeter is associated with the harvest, with the cultivation of crops, and with motherhood. She is the fruiting mother, the plant in the agricultural cycle. However, she is also known for her fearful wrath, which she unleashes upon humanity in her mourning, and she is associated with fire in this aspect. She also rides a dragon-yoked golden chariot. Shauna is the natural counterpart to Demeter, which we learned from the very first episode. Shauna is very much associated with the earth and with motherhood, which we learn when we discover she is pregnant with Jeff's baby. Shauna and her best friend Jackie have a very complex relationship. And although they are not mother and daughter, they do have that addictively strong best friendship that can reflect a maternal relationship. And yes, I do realize there are some romantic overtones to their friendship as well, which only adds to this layered parallel. Shauna embodies Demeter Arrhenes' fiery image when she loses her temper. Whether when she beats Lottie, or holds a man at gunpoint over her beloved minivan, or murdering her lover in cold blood, Shauna's anger is something to behold and steer clear of. 
In the younger timeline, Shauna is the provider of food. She butchers the carcasses and she distributes the meat from storage. In the older timeline, she is very often in the kitchen preparing meals and feeding her family. She carries that harvest goddess energy into her home. Now moving on to Demeter's daughter, Persephone, the springtime goddess. Her other name is Kore, which means maiden, but she becomes Persephone when she transforms into Queen of the Dead. Persephone is not only the image of fresh blooming life, but also the image of death. The Greeks believed that she was the face of death to come and claim them, so we can see the broad scale of her repertoire compared to how modern society views her. Kore was responsible for coloring the flowers in spring, and while she was out with her oceanids in a meadow, she was abducted by Hades on his four-horse chariot, surrounded by his group of pigs, and taken into a cave that opened to the underworld. In this action, we can see that Kore is the seed, fallen from the mother plant to the earth, as part of the seasonal cycle. Only Hakate heard her scream from a distance, but knew not what had happened. Now, Kore is a maiden on Earth. However, Persephone is said to have a few children as queen of the underworld, including Zagreus, the first incarnation of Dionysus, and the Eumenides, one aspect of the Arrhenes. This is a complex subject which deserves its own video, and we will get there. For now, it's simply worth noting to start with. Jackie has some clear connections with Persephone. Whether as the preppy princess of Rutgers with plans to paint her room pink and green, or the nihilistic maiden who gave it up to Travis so she wouldn't die a virgin, Jackie embodies the main character energy of Kore, whose mother punished all of humanity when she goes missing. I'm sure everyone back home is so fucking sad to be losing their perfect little princess, but they'll never know how tragic and boring and insecure you really are. Jackie was team captain and had all of the Yellow Jackets following her in the way we can only imagine a goddess would expect. Jackie doesn't adjust to the wilderness like the others and doesn't accept the situation they've been forced into, and so the wilderness chose. The idea of freeze her out took on a whole new meaning when Jackie left the cabin on the night of the first snow of the season. So, just as Persephone returns to the land of the dead during winter, Jackie dies on the first night of winter, and in the moments leading up to her death when Laura Lee appears, a shadowy male figure looms in the background telling Jackie that they've been waiting for her. Is this man dead cabin guy, or is this the god of the underworld, Hades? Kore graduates from the Maiden into the Queen of the Dead, just as Jackie has transformed into something greater in her death. Shauna communed with the dead while keeping Jackie's body in the meat shed, but when the group finally cremated her body and then consumed her, it was done in a ritualistic way. Jackie nourished Shauna's unborn child in the womb, and later, when Shauna loses consciousness in childbirth, she hears Jackie's voice call her back. After she loses the baby, Shauna goes back to the meat shed and tries to call out to Jackie for a shoulder to cry on. This is an example of why I believe that Jackie will become a symbol of the wilderness for the group as their time in the wild progresses. She saved their lives with her own body and will forever be memorialized for her sacrifice. While Shauna does not reject the wilderness in the way that Jackie and Laura Lee did, she has been resistant to some of the wilderness worship, especially during her pregnancy. Lottie's practices were getting a bit too intense for her, and after the loss of her baby, she has turned away from the others for support. She is haunted by her dream of the others cannibalizing her baby. She seeks out Jackie for comfort in the meat shed, and her mournful cries are similar to worship, as she cries that she really needs her. Yes, this can be interpreted as someone longing for their friend in a time of need, but as the others bond over their wilderness worship, Shauna creates her own solitary form of worship, and in doing so, apotheosizes Jackie to goddess status. Jackie. I really need you right now. Now, just as Lottie's initiates at her compound wear purple, the priestesses at Eleusis also wore purple. And, like Lottie's initiates, they were also associated with bees and with honey, and were called the Melissae. These priestesses lived at the temple full-time and acted as oracles and sibyls. Their famed abilities were well-known, and even the oracle at Delphi, Pythia, was called the Delphic Bee. 
Pythia lived at the Temple of Apollo, and she was dedicated to the god of prophecy. However, the Melissae at Eleusis were dedicated to Demeter and her mysteries. They held ceremonies at the temple twice each year, the Greater Mysteries, which were in September, for anyone to attend, and the Lesser Mysteries, which were in October or November, and for female initiates only. The Melissae play their own role in the myth of Demeter and Persephone. Bees are symbolically connected to life, death, and rebirth, and the reincarnation of souls. With their role in spreading new life to plants, they are seen as a symbol of reincarnation and fertility. Demeter, in her own role as the fruiting mother, the plant in the life cycle, must be pollinated by the bees in order to share new life on earth. So the Melissae, as bee priestesses, are perfectly suited to serve the goddess Demeter in her mysteries. It is very interesting that in season two, we got a new character called Melissa in Yellow Jackets, and I do believe that she will become friends with Shauna in the future. I even suspect that Melissa may be an additional survivor in the adult timeline that we've not seen yet. One more interesting idea while we're on the subject of the Melissae is the idea of the Sibylline books being connected to this story as well. The Sibylline books were records of the Delphic Bee and other famed oracles, and these were kept over centuries by dedicated priests devoted to the study of these channeled messages. However, most of the records were destroyed with the rise of Christianity, and only fragments remain to this day. The history of these books is absolutely fascinating, and they were consulted by Roman emperors for centuries, and I suspect that Shauna's diaries were a nod to these valuable records. Shauna kept her own record of their time in the wilderness, and she would periodically revisit those haunting experiences by unlocking them from her safe and reading through some of the old entries. By burning the diaries, it is symbolic of the lost recorded history from what happened as part of the Eleusinian Mysteries. The things that they learned out in the wilderness, based on their own experiences, were consumed by the flames, and it seems very likely that those books were invaluable to the future of the story. Well, fellow jackets, this seems like a good place to stop for today, and I want to know all of your thoughts in the comments below. I will be discussing the other survivors and their corresponding goddesses in the next video, as well as discussing the myth of Demeter and Persephone in detail and the other reincarnation myths relating to the Orphic hymns. Let me know your thoughts and questions in the comments below, and be sure to hit the thumbs up and share this video if you enjoyed it. And consider joining my Patreon or channel memberships linked below for exclusive content. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. I dedicate that to you, sexy lady. <laughs> <laughs>